folks. A few months ago, I promised y'all that I would be doing another Mario game review. So, here we are. Well, hey, when life and work come a-calling, you have to answer, you know? Plus, we had to finish FPS time. It's not an excuse, smartass. It's the way it was. You're here every day, Shasta. Don't act like you don't know what could come up sometimes. Eh, yourself, jerk. Shit. Anyway, I mentioned in my review of the first Super Mario Bros. game that there were actually two Mario games that bore the name Super Mario Bros. 2. There's this one that pretty much everyone's familiar with, but the one that we're taking a look at today is the infamous Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. I'm fine, Chess. After playing Fugitive Hunter, I think I've worked out enough anger to last me until next year. This game actually has a pretty interesting tale to tell, both for its development and for why it wasn't released initially in America. So, let's take that good old trip to history land. Super Mario Bros. proved to be a huge success, not only responsible for making Nintendo a household name and being the driving force behind the sales of the NES console, but also for effectively ending the infamous video game crash of 1983 and 1984. The console industry was back in business, and it was the Italian Plumber Brothers leading the way. So with a massive achievement such as this, a sequel was inevitable. The four main devs behind the creation of the first Super Mario Bros. quickly got back to work on the next title in the franchise. During this time, they were also working on an arcade game called Versus Super Mario Bros. It was basically the same as the NES Super Mario Bros., just with more and harder levels. This got Miyamoto thinking, why not just build on the original Super Mario Bros. game? And so, the sequel would use the same engine, the same sprites, the same enemies, and the same music from Super Mario Bros., with just a few slight graphical tweaks. The game was only given a short amount of time to be completed, but because they were building on an already existing game, the development process did not take long, and within four months, Super Mario Bros. 2, that is to say, Super Mario Bros. Lost Levels, was ready. Shortly after the game launched in Japan, Plans were underway to bring the game to America. However, before the game was given the okay to be ported to the States, it had to first be playtested to see what the common reaction from the American public would be. They did this because Nintendo had a very, very strong foothold in the American video game market, and they didn't want to lose it. After all, the video game crash had just happened and any misstep on Nintendo's end could potentially estrange their customers, both old and newcomers alike. So Super Mario Bros. 2 was tested, and the results came back negative. The first issue, and probably the least of the testers' problems with the game, was that it was insanely hard. But the one big problem that they had with Super Mario Bros. 2 was that it was just too similar to Super Mario Bros. 1. The verdict was in and Super Mario Bros. 2 was halted from being released in the USA. It eventually was released over here, though, only in the form of a 16-bit remake on Super Mario All-Stars on the SNES. So was this game unfairly halted and unfairly judged at the hands of an unsure industry? Or was it a smart business decision on Nintendo's end? Well, let's play it and see. Oh. I should mention that because I don't have a Famicom nor the disc system add-on that the game was originally made for, and I have no intentions of ever buying one either, I'm gonna just emulate it. 
I'm well aware that I could always just review the 16-bit version on Super Mario Bros. All-Stars, but I'm saving Super Mario All-Stars for a review of all its own. I am also aware of the fact that I could buy the game for the Virtual Console on both the Wii U and the 3DS, but for the hell of it, I'm just gonna emulate it. It's no big deal. So the game starts up similar to how the first game starts, and by similar I mean pretty much the same. The only difference is that there's now a paracoupa that flies towards and then eventually over you. Let that stand as a foreshadow of the shitstorm that's coming your way. One of the cool things that this game has to offer is that you have the option of playing solely as Luigi. That's fucking awesome. I love Mario as a character, don't get me wrong, but Luigi is my all-time favorite Mario franchise hero. Granted, there is a drawback to playing as him in this game. He can jump higher than Mario, but it comes at a price. Luigi has really terrible traction. After making a jump or what have you, he tends to slide around like he's got bacon grease on the bottom of his shoes. You kind of get used to it, though. The more you play as Luigi, the more familiar you get with his particular physics. So throughout this review, I'm going to be playing as Luigi. We begin level 1, and like the title screen, it starts pretty much the same as how the first game's level 1 started. Up, oh, there's a mushroom. Gotta get that. And... it kills me. You know how Shasta and I mention how this game is really, really hard? Well, it's because we can't emphasize it enough. Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels is insane when it comes to the difficulty. <laughs> The difficulty in the Lost Levels is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it's a very challenging game and it will put your gamer skills to the test. Seriously, this game ranks up there with Ninja Gaiden and Zelda 2 in terms of challenging NES games. And believe it or not, this can make Lost Levels... fun. It's actually enjoyable to see how far you can get and to improve your prowess as a gamer. But on the other hand, this game is kick you in the nards HARD. Lost Levels is mean-spirited, and it does not, in any way, shape, or form, let up on the difficulty. In addition to the poison mushrooms, you also have to contend with red piranha plants that are WAY more aggressive than their green cousins, wind that can toss you around like a rag doll, douchey enemy placements, pitfalls galore, and... Whoa, wait a minute. Is that Hammer Brother walking towards me? Aw, oh, fuck no, man! Why did they have to do that? My most hated enemy from the first game, and now he actively comes after you. Ugh. So yeah, if you're gonna play this game, know right now that the difficulty is set to max. So be sure to bring along some extra patience. If you got any, that is. There is one godsend, though, that the devs graciously put in Lost Levels, and that is Infinite Continues. And trust me, you're gonna need them, because this is one of those games where you die, 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 die. And without the Unlimited Continues, you'll more than likely end up with post-traumatic stress disorder after dying and starting over from square fucking one so many times. One thing that I mentioned about Lost Levels is that the devs seem to have slightly updated the visuals from the first game. The graphics in Lost Levels just seem to be more crisp and polished than what was seen in the previous game. For instance, the ground represents dirt a lot better than how Super Mario Bros. 1 did. It actually looks like dirt, rather than just dirt-colored blocks. Another little thing that was added visually are the sets of eyes that were plastered onto things like clouds, mountains, and even the mushrooms. 
That was kind of cool. A little creepy, but still cool. Also, the enemies, graphically, look more refined than they did in the first game. I should note that the reason behind these minor yet noticeable visual updates was because games that were produced on Famicom discs has slightly more memory in them than an average cartridge, thus devs were able to make some games look better. Hell, there were even some Famicom disc games that had better sound effects and music compared to their cartridge counterparts. But other than a modest graphical overhaul, everything else in Lost Levels has been relatively unchanged from what was given in the previous game. One very good example is the story. Now, I know that it's pretty much become a running gag that every Mario game, for the exception of a few RPG titles, has the same plot of Princess Peach getting kidnapped by Bowser and Mario going off to save her. But I don't know, the plots seem different enough to me for each game. But the plot in this game was lifted directly from Mario Bros. 1. Yeah, nothing's changed. Bowser captured Peach and turned all the inhabitants of the Mushroom Kingdom into inanimate objects. Again. And he also placed seven of those jerkball toads in seven of the eight castles. Again. Shit, even the ending to this game is the same old song and dance from Super Mario Bros. 1. Granted, the Toads now come out to join the party for the curtain call, but yeah. Same as what was already given. It's not too much of a flaw, but I think that they could have done something new when it came to the story. Such as Bowser kidnapping Peach's parents, or maybe stealing a priceless artifact with mystical powers. Or something. Big talk coming from someone who's never even been to school. One really great thing that the devs did for Lost Levels was the inclusion of a ninth world with an additional four levels, bringing us to a total of 36 levels in all. Now, I didn't play through the ninth world too much, in fact I barely played through it at all, but the fact that it's here is great. However, getting to World 9 is not an easy feat to accomplish. In fact, it's damn near impossible. In order to be able to play through World 9, you have to complete the game without continuing. In other words, once you lose your last life, your chances of ever playing through the levels of World 9 are thrown right out the window. And you have to start the game all over again. So don't be down on yourself if you feel the need to cheat in order to see these last few levels. Speaking of secret levels, there are an additional four more worlds that can be unlocked, but you have to beat the game eight times in order to play through them. And... I'm not masochistic enough to do that. I think it's the right time now to give this game its final grade, and I know this episode wasn't as long as I usually make them, but let me explain why. Part of the reason why this review was so short is because what else could I say about this game? What's already good about Lost Levels, I've already covered in my review of the first Super Mario Bros. game. And that leads me to my number one issue with Lost Levels. It is just too damn similar to its predecessor. This was the main reason why the game wasn't initially released here in the States. Sure, the difficulty played a minor factor, but it didn't play as big of a role in the halting of this game's release in America as people tend to think it did. I mean, think about it. We got games like Ninja Gaiden and Zelda 2, and those games are nowhere near easy. Reviewers have mentioned this before, but it bears to be repeated. Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels is less of a sequel and more along the lines of an expansion pack. In fact, Miyamoto himself even stated that this game was intended for players who mastered the first Super Mario Bros. game and wanted more. Also, Lost Levels is not as memorable as the original Super Mario Bros. was, nor did it have as great of an impact on me. So, does that make Lost Levels bad? 
actually, no! I had a lot of fun playing this game. Yeah, it was harder than hell, but it was still a pretty enjoying experience. It was a gauntlet, but a fun one nonetheless. Like I said, everything that was good about Super Mario Bros. 1 is present in Lost Levels. But in all honesty, I can only recommend this game to either hardcore gamers who want something really, really challenging, or to die-hard Mario fans. My final verdict for Lost Levels is an eye for in-between. A good game, but definitely not for everyone. But I really needed a second opinion for this review, so we have joining with us for the first time on my channel, White Phoenix. Phoenix, if you please. Here at NEC, thanks for inviting me to check out Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels for ya. <laughs> oh, have we had a slight dalliance with this game in the past? My earliest memory of it was watching my uncle play through it, and oh boy, I remember he had some trouble with it as well, but I can tell you, he actually beat this game. That was pretty incredible considering that I can't even get past the second level. <laughs> World 2, 2 is the furthest I've managed to get. Let me just say this, if you consider yourself a god at Mario, but you've never played this game, you may want to reconsider your thoughts on yourself, because this game will put every platformer skill you have to the test. It's basically Super Mario Brothers with the difficulty scale pushed up by a multiplier of 10. There's no hand holding here, you really do have to figure out how to get through each level by yourself and it's not as obvious as it may seem. Um, it will throw some curveballs at you very, very quickly. Look at this, I'm in between a rock and a hard plate, what, what am I supposed to do here? Like that, that's how we do it, but that's, see, it throws all kinds of tricks at you this one, but this squid being in there is not normal. Now there's two of them! What was I supposed to do there? The version that I'm playing is the Super Nintendo version, which was bundled with uh, Super Mario All-Stars here in the UK. I don't know if it's the same in America, but... But this game was the original Super Mario Bros. 2 in Japan. However, I, as I understand it, they consider the game to be too difficult for us people in the West, which is why we got what we know as Super Mario Bros. 2, which is actually a game that's called Doki Doki Panic, if I, if I, if I remember correctly. I'm going right off the top of my head here. <laughs> but yeah, this, um, this is basically what happens if you fuse Super Mario with Dark Souls. If you think that Dark Souls is too difficult, you, you may not want to play this game. <laughs> yeah, this part's a pretty rare sight on this game. Oh boy, you will never appreciate seeing that flag quite so much. On the surface, it looks pretty identical to the original Mario Brothers. I mean, there's no real difference in the colour palette or the animations. It's pretty much the same game, just with addition, as the name suggests, lost levels. Levels that you're not supposed to be able to beat. The game is not very generous when it comes to power-ups either. Indeed, it will troll you on numerous occasions when you try to even so much as get a super mushroom. Game? You are an expert in trolling. Just, just look at this. There's a mushroom and yet I barely managed to get it. That's the kind of level of trolling this game delivers you. It spoon feeds you little morsels of hope before dashing them against the rocks. There's also another power-up in it that you want to avoid, completely breaking the usual logic of games. You normally pick up every power-up you see, but if you collect the purple mushroom, you will lose your current growth, as it were. So if you're Super Mario, you go back to normal Mario. If you're normal Mario, you die, so you definitely don't want to go picking that up, and it will appear in in the most unexpected moments, so you've got to keep your eyes peeled and your head on straight for this one. Even the good old warp zone cheat won't do you much good here. It kind of chose you as well. You can only go to zone two, whereas on the original you've got a selection of zones. It's like it's like the game's wagging a finger at you, saying, 
Uh-uh-uh, you didn't save a magic word. Ah, oh, boy. What? One other thing to note is that unlike the original game, uh, you can't actually play a two-player mode on this. You can choose either Mario or Luigi. It's identical games, as far as I know. There's no difference. But the original, you can actually play a two-player taking turns mode. One plays Mario, one plays Luigi. In the Lost Levels, you don't get that option. It's one or nothing, it seems. This game's pretty tricky to recommend. I mean, it's classic Mario, still. It's just a hell of a lot harder. The, the best way I could put it is, if you prefer your games to be a little bit easier, or if you weren't that used to the original Mario, I would give this one a miss, because it will drive you to endless levels of frustration. This is just this game all over. A jump too far. However, if you thought Dark Souls was a walk in the park, then this might be the game for you. This will test every Mario skill you have. If you're up for the challenge, you'll find a lot to like here. How? How do I even do this? I mean, seriously. How? And here, there's nothing wrong with a bit more Mario in your life, let's face it. Oh. Oh, no. You see, this is the level of stuff you could expect with this game. Blah. And you still get this little swine. Oh. And that other castle can feel very, very far away indeed. And with that, I'll hand you guys back to Redneck. Hope you enjoy the review. Thank you very kindly, Phoenix. Well, what about you, Shasta? You have any opinions on Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels? Alrighty then. Well, everyone, we're done with this episode, but we're not entirely finished with Mario just yet. So join Shasta and I next time as we take a look at what is, in my opinion, the actual sequel to Super Mario Bros. 1, Super Mario Bros. 2, a.k.a. Super Mario Bros. USA. See y'all in the next review.